Okay, I love you, Bristol. Let's continue. Okay, let's let's light our torch up now. Let's get our uh, let our barrels set, get our flame right, and we're gonna cut this pipe. We want a quarter turn or so of a subtling. Seesaw it back and forth, little subtling, little auction, until the flames look right. It's about a medium blue. We're going to get off the top because it'll cut a hole if you sit there very long. We're going to hit the air trigger. We're going to look at it to make sure the little fingers are right. Now turn it off. You don't need to blow hole blowing unless you're trying to cut through paint. We're on pipeline pipe and it's got a coating, then we would leave that on for the first go around to burn the paint off. We need about 250 to 350 degrees, is what I found is a good temperature to cut, like I said before. And we get to that, and then we're going to cut it. You may do that one time, it may take two times if it's windy and it's cold. Whatever it takes, that's what you want to do. Some people say, oh, you don't need to preheat it, just do it. You try that, and your cut's going to be all like an alligator. Skip, cut. Uh, when it's cutting, it's going to jump out because the pipe in front of it can't get to a kindling temperature. Okay, we're up on top. We're going to seesaw back and forth until we get that a bright orange, but not melting. Right about here. We're going to ease into it. We'll go this way about an inch and a half, kind of quick, and we're going to come back. Now I'm looking down at this, and that little uh, crack where they cut the metal out, that little space should be clean, there shouldn't be a lot of flag coming back, or it's fusing again. If it is, that means that I am going too slow. But most of the time, especially when you're learning, people go too fast. They'll be standing around there talking, usually everybody's talking when you're cutting pipe, and you're not listening to that sound. The sound is telling you that it's cutting right. Listen to the sound. You've heard me say that before about welding. Listen to the sound when it's cutting. Got it nice and consistent. And that's how I can know if it's cutting good on the other side whenever I'm uh, where I can't see it. If this pipe is not hot enough, the flame is going to want to skip out because the metal can't burn. It's not hot enough to burn. So as you're turning, it's just going to skip out and you'll hear it make a little When you start doing that, it's trying to tell you, hey, you need to slow down because this pipe, you can get it hot enough. And I'm going to jump out of here in a minute. When it jumps out, you got to back the torch up to where you start, got out, and let it heat up, and then you start over again. you got two of you, you're in school, you cut your pocket, it's good two of you work together. Somebody can watch that hose. You can do it by yourself. It's a little bit of a chore. Not have it on the pipe when he falls, or not have sparks get on it. Biggest mistake you'll make though will be to, to go too, too uh, fast. It's about right, I can tell by the sound. Can't see on the other side, but I can hear it. You want to have your hand up here. When you get about two inches from being cut through, I have my hand on the air trigger. As soon as it cuts through, I want to kill it. Kill the suddenly, kill the oxygen. When you make a good cut, it should be where there's not a lot of slag right here. I want you to look at this. There's little bitty pieces of slag. If I had a fall, I would rake that around there. It should come out really easy. 
that's what a cut should look like. You see how smooth we were we came in because we did that little zigzag on the top. We cut in one direction, then we came back the other direction, and we did not have that hanging slag there to make the uh, torch uh, flame pop, and it would have made a groove in there and would have messed the cut up. So this is what it should look like. I'm Gerald W. Brister, and that's how you cut your pipe.